Welcome to the regular council meeting of Tuesday, February 21st, 2023 at 4.40 p.m. in council chambers and via Zoom. We acknowledge that the town of Kirkland Lake is located on the traditional territory of Algonquin peoples, including Beaver House First Nation, unceded territory of other Indigenous peoples. We recognize the presence of the Algonquin, Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, Cree, and Métis people in our community since time immemorial and honor their stewardship and care of these lands. We hereby affirm our continued commitment and responsibility to reconciliation. Call to order in a moment of silence. Item number two, approval of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Vlad Shava, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens. Be it resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of council held on Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, be approved as circulated. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. Item number three, declaration of pecuniary interest. Councillor Dykins. I, Dolly Dykins, I am declaring an indirect pecuniary interest on the agenda of the meeting dated February 21st, 2023, in the open meeting, agenda item number 4.2, agenda title, general update of activities from an eco legal minds. It is um, indirect as I am an employee of a body with pecuniary interest. Uh, the nature of my interest is as follows. I am an employee of Northern College that currently has a contract with the Negro Eco Mines, which directly affects my employment. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, petitions and delegations. We'll have Boreal Forest Medieval Village Impacts and Local Services and the Environment. Catherine Purpleway and Anna McPherson, Canonomy Watershed Ecological Alliance. And just come to the podium. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to start by uh, Madam Mayor thanking you and uh, the delegation that went to Roma about this, um, the issues that we're having. And just for shortness sake, we are Canonomy Watershed Ecological Alliance. I'm going to shorten that to CLE as I speak. And we're talking about the Boreal Forest Medieval Village Developers, and I'm just going to shorten that to be a BFMV. So I would like to say that Anne and I both represent Qui, and we are also taxpayers in the community as well. Um, so first of all, just a short summary of what they are. Uh, Boreal Forest is a developer company that uh, are attracted to unincorporated land opportunities and the, the lower cost of living to be found. The uh, land that they purchase is kept as one unit and subdivided internally, sold to investors who then have a membership association. So tax continues as one piece of property despite the number of lots that are sold on it. Um, the uh, market, the BM, the BFMV markets to people that are looking to escape the rules and regulations of modern society. They're looking to find a way to live simply without interference or input from outsiders, that being regulations, towns, rules, those kind of things. So first of all, I believe I sent some, some pieces of paper. So if there's first thing I need to point your attention to is the map. And the most obvious thing on the map is that Kirkland Lake is literally the epicenter of these developments as they now stand. So that has some a huge significance to the town of Kirkland Lake, as well as other properties, both environmentally, service, and otherwise. So just how does so when we look at it, first of all, we're just going to look through the paper. So site one and site three, Swan Lake and Keith Lake are both actively, are both sold out and they're both actively marketed as off-site grid, off-grid village sites. There's 250 lots on Keith Lake. There are 218 lots on Swan, Swan Lake. Lake, 119 investors on Swan Lake. Um, the internal regulation of both properties, of all properties, is that there will be no septic, no hydro. 
The Swan Lake does have a couple of permanent residents now. There are a lot of small homes that are in storage and trailers waiting to get access to the sites. And their waste management at present is they have one communal freehold free incinerator toilet and they have they are contracting waste receptacles to take the waste to the Kirkland Lake dump. Uh, Keith Lake is currently unoccupied, but they have plans, as far as we are aware, to have set, put a road in through an Eco Eagle lands last fall. Uh, site 3 Long Lake is close to Charlton. It uh, is promoted as full-time or seasonal use. Now, we see on the website that there are 92 half-acre lots. From what we did understand, there are quite a bit more lots. We've heard 215 tossed around, but I can only refer to what I can prove. Um, there's 81 members. It's being uh, promoted as a mixed use, homesteaders, cottagers, and campers. Uh, and it currently has some permanent residents, but it is gated and it's restricted entry. And from what we've learned on a hydro and from video drone footage, there is one outhouse for all waste, for all waste and for all the people that are there. They also have above ground waste containers where they are supposed to be paling their waste into the containers. At the time of the video, they did not know what they were going to do with those containers. Okay, so how are these developments going to affect Kirkland Lake Town and also the surroundings? And we're gonna just flip over to the next page while we're there. Um, first of all, the Town of Kirkland Lake is to advise the Ministry that the Town opposes any new development in unorganized township as it contravenes the PPS, which is Provincial Policy Statement 2020, and development in the unorganized townships place an undue strain on public service facilities and infrastructure of surrounding municipalities. This is your own words put forth to a petition for the Penogamy Lake property. Uh, the owner of that property tried to subdivide it into two parcels. The town of Kirkland Lake, after being approached by the ministry, upheld the, the same uh, decisions that they've held since 2005 to, to hold uh, severance. The owner, just a little history, the owner of the property, when he was not able to subdivide it into two parcels, approached the Boreal Forest medieval village people and sold it to them at a significant reduction in price to what he was offered elsewhere. So he sold it knowing that it would be subdivided into 80 units as a retaliation to the town and to the lake. So direct, directly to create negative effects. That was his goal and he's achieving it. Okay, so how does that affect? Um, they currently have sold lots to potentially add 560 permanent residences in site one to three, and an additional 80 seasonal residents on site four. Of uh, 80, 65 are sold, and he is actively trying to sell the remaining 15 lots. And this is after the bulletin that came out in November 30th. Yes. Okay. Um, Realistically, and just for comparison, Kanagami and Long Lake developments are going to be, are projected to be about the size of the population of Swapatika, while Keith Lake and Swan Lake would be about the population of Chapatus. Just kind of that size in your head. Services. So Kirkland Lake is marketed as the nearest town for services, not for goods, for services. Um, it, it says how if one person on their website questioned what happened if they have an accident and they're like, no problem, the helicopter will be there from <laughs> things like that. Um, all sites lie within the Blanche River healthcare catchment area. All sites will use the Temiskaming social, medical, and emergency response services. Swan Lake is, and this is with one tax, there'll be four taxes for the, these potential units. Swan Lake is currently using the dump site, the Kirkland Lake dump site for solid waste to a third party contractor. And that is their plan moving forward. And Culver is the only nearby pumping facility for liquid waste. And those, just heading back to the map, the Economy Lake site on their website, it's saying now that uh, investors will personally be responsible for solid and liquid waste removal. There will be no septic systems. So, 
Environmental, a well, main draw of this area, and one of the things that has attracted most people is its uh, wealth of outdoor rec recreational attractions. And these developments currently have no environmental control or environmental studies for sustainability on any of the sites, in spite of occupancy on two of them. And uh, they're all at the top of the watershed. Swan Lake flows north, the rest of them flow south. Uh, Kanagami has already experienced algae blooms, uh, so it's already showing that it's environmentally stressed. And it was something that we as Kanagami residents were already looking into internally prior to talking about adding 80 more residences, drawing water from the lake and releasing waste into the lake. And this is this can have huge significance in fishing in uh, recreational potential, swimming, fishing, camping, and as well it could create negative effects downstream coming into Kirkland Lake territory of Guadalupe and Culver Park. Economic, they do not plan to spend, they plan to spend minimal amount of money in Kirkland Lake. They are trying to be self-sufficient, off-grid, off basically out of sight. They don't like people coming near them. Uh, they are actively promoting their own suppliers for building supplies, small houses, trailers, heating, even clothing is being uh, sold on site. So they're not looking at Kirkland Lake as a place to purchase goods and serve goods, strictly to use services. Um, and the cheaper unregulated campground could affect attendance at places like Culver Park or Esther Lake, which have to follow regulations in place as a campground. So as a group, we were asking for two things from council today. One is if you could send a letter of support to our organization or not to it, but so that we could have it in our possession um, so that it could we could add your voice to the growing number of municipal voices, as well as we've heard from Atachuan and Beaver House First Nations. We have four Métis bands that have added their voice of support and several municipalities. So we noticed that in March 2022, that the last town council did write a note to Stephen Clark and address the issues. So obviously you are aware of the issues and we're just asking for a letter of support saying that you are concerned about the issues. And the second thing that we would like to address, and just a second point, two things came out in December, two positive notes that we were quite happy about. One was a bulletin. Uh, Yeah. Okay, maybe you, you've reached your 10 minutes. Uh, and that's that's a bullet. Okay. Yeah. Put the bullet on your website. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, um, council members, do you have any questions or comments for this delegation? Councillor Shaba. Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just to uh, educate me some more, I got two. Uh, Questions. Um, they said all the lots uh, were sold. Have they been registered as such? No, the lots, how they are doing it and how they have, we have learned from questioning is what they are doing is they're so they purchasing a large piece of property. They're then doing internal leasing surveys yeah. for roads yeah. and, and they're doing GPS points to develop half acre lots within the large lot. They are leasing those pieces of those sites uh, that they have internally GPS uh, subdivided, and they are creating a membership association from investors. So an investor purchases uh, 15,000 on Kanagami Lake. For 15,000, they have a lot, and then they are a member of that association. Those associations have Facebooks, they are closed. We, they have no content. Okay, thanks for that. Second one is, uh, uh, do you know if this is going to be an all year round? Uh, they have been talking about it being all year round. Now they're talking about it being a three season. For Kanagami Lake, Kanagami Lake, Lake other three, sites, they're, oh, they're looking at year, year round. round. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, ladies, for your delegation. Um, as far as the municipality, um, you know that we went to Roma yep. and we did receive information from the minister that they do plan to do a site visit 
um, in the spring. So they have asked for leeway in that regard. So at this time, the municipality is not going to take any further action. We are waiting for the provincial government because we are um, creatures of the provincial government. As far as the letter, um, possibly the place that could be brought up is Temiskaming Municipal Association. So that municipal association actually has all 23 we are in close contact with them. You are? Yeah, That's we get a letter from them. Letter. We've got a letter from um, Itachuan. We've got a letter from Matheson. We've got some um, support from Lada, Joby, Englehart, Elton, like the whole region. So we're asking Excellent. just for, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the other thing is the bulletin that they put out is for people, uh, information bulletin regarding off-grid developments in unincorporated townships. It's very hidden in the provincial website and it's something that should be out there for people looking if this could go on the website somewhere that is the ask um, simply to post it so that people looking into it it gives the things that should be considered health and safety insurance things like that so it's a good knowledge bulletin and it's to protect the investor too because they're getting hooked in on this investment to come and do that but protection. they 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 aren't actually allowed to do it as per the bulletin so if they it, it is a protection for yeah. the investor absolutely. absolutely we thank you very much for your time and i'm sure staff will come back with a report at a later date but thank, thank you so very much sure. Moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Casey Owen, be it resolved with the delegation from representatives of Kanakami Watershed Ecological Alliance entitled Boreal Forest Medieval Village Impacts to Local Services and the Environment, be received for information. All in favor? All opposed? Item carries unanimous. Item number 4.2 General Update of Activities from Igneco Eagle Mines Limited, Andre Beachy, Vice President Ontario. Christopher Adams, General Manager, Macassa Mine. Adria Millet, Director of Communications. You may take the podium. Proceed, sir. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And I would like to start to thank you all for the invitation today to talk a little bit about Portland Week and the future with now with Eagle. Uh, we had prepared this short presentation. I don't know if we were going to be able to do it on the screen. Or... Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'd like again to start uh, following the, uh, the mayor about the acknowledgement about where we are in the first uh, territory of the First Nations. Um, it's very important for us. Uh, I will ask you to please read this at your own time, but it's a disclosure that we have to include in our presentation related to forward open statements. Okay. So the next one, please. Okay. So uh, I would start by just introducing the company. I know that the Agnico you know, uh, name and brand is not well recognized in Ontario, so we're working hard to change that, but we introduce the company to all of uh, we're going to do a quick overview of our Ontario operations and follow more detailed discussion about Marcas and Upper Beaver because those are the ones are concerning the township. So please. Let's go. So we had completed this past year in February the merge of the coast between Kirkland Lake Gold and Magnet Eagle Mines. That created the biggest gold mine producer in Canada, the third in the world of market cap. We have operations in Ontario, Quebec, Finland, Mexico, Australia. Um, our mine here in Northern Ontario, Detroit uh, Lake Mine became the biggest gold mine producer in Canada this year. We were producing 732,000 ounces last year. We're in, this year is going to be around 700,000. And it is, it is a, a Canadian company. So, we understand the Northern Ontario culture. We, we've been operating here for a very long time and our values are very aligned with what we believe it's a sustainable path forward for Kirkland Lake and the Macasa Mike. So just, just as I was explaining before, we are like, here's just a map with the location of our mines. 
Uh, most of our production right now, it's coming from Quebec and Ontario with the flagship operation being Detour Lake Mine. Uh, we we have a, a significant land package now with the merge in the MTB region, Cross and Quebec and Ontario. And I will discuss um, a little bit about the, the, the vision that we have for the region and what we're doing. Uh, our our corporate office is, is in Toronto, so I'm just reinforcing the message that we are a Canadian company. You can go to the next slide. So we're committed to sustainability, right? So we are all operating hours in relation to health and safety in the workplace is a priority for us as part of our values, as well protecting the environment, respecting our employees and respecting the communities that we work at. Now, one of the, the success factors for us is to be the preferred partner. We wanna be the preferred partner for the communities that we work on, the First Nations that we're operating in their territory, our employees, and also the government stakeholders. So if you go next, so uh, in relation to our Ontario operations, we have two operations. We have Marcasa Mine that you're all familiar with, uh, and Detour Lake Gold, Detour uh, Lake Mine, which is north of here. And we have two projects right now in Ontario. We have um, Upper Beaver, which is close to here, about six kilometers. We have the Rema Reef, close to Thunder Bay. And in the brownfield stage, we have as well Detour Underground, which is where we're looking at operating underground mine in parallel with the open environment at Detour. Your next bit. So this is Detour, is as I mentioned, the biggest gold mine in Canada right now. We process, currently our budget is, is close to 27.4 million tons for 2023. So it's a very big, low grade, high volume gold mine. It's been in operation since 2013, and this past year was our record production. So we've established a very good, um, sustainable path forward for Detour. It's the flagship operation for Red Nico Eagle Mines, and we have a lot of potential and opportunities to grow that production up further. If you go to the next one, please. Now, Macasa, we are a new chapter in the history, the rich history of Macasa Mine. Uh, we we see the number four shaft that just got commissioned, so we just finished commissioning out. And that's a game changer, right? So we are from operating conditions in Macasa, heat, heat conditions for the operators. The miners are all improving. It's been improving significantly for over a year. We also um, did uh, some modifications in relation to our strategy around Macasa. So Macasa with Kirkland Lake, we well, there was um, uh, Macasa was a, a key aspect of Kirkland Lake Gold. Now under the Nico Eagle umbrella, we are not so exposed, so we are able to change our strategy where Macasa was operating, targeting a twenty gram mine, twenty gram per ton mine. With Agnico, we can take a different approach, moving towards maximizing our value and also improving in relation to sustainability in relation to how we achieve those targets. Uh, we also implement some management changes, like myself included, <laughs> um, in the regional in, in the regional area. I personally started with the tour and I came over with all the mergers with Chris Adams, so it's our general manager that's here. He started in the middle of the year. And uh, if you, he, he, he's here most of the time here at Kirkland Lake. So if you have any questions, you can reach out directly to him or myself. I'm based in tenants. So if you go next one, please. So Macasa, we see a lot of potential for exploring. For exploration of Macasa, we continue with the main, let's say, zone being the salt mine complex. Um, we, we also have the main break and we are exploring to the east now, closer to the number four shaft that's also a major um, leveraging point for us to improve the exploration platforms we have in Macasa. So we do see the mine right now going over 10 years. We continue, we have this year significant investment from an exploration capital program at Macasa. We continue to explore uh, with the intent to better delineate the ore body. The next one. So again, in relation to Upper Beaver and Rama Reef, as I mentioned before, uh, Upper Beaver, I would say it's the more mature project that we have right now. It's been a pre feasibility level study already. Uh, we are now looking into 
better than me that 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 ore body with an exploration shaft potentially sinking it as early as 2024. Ramon Reef is a project that currently is on care management. So we are just waiting to, for the right uh, marketing magicians to start. Whereas the tour is related to the underground mine that we are planning at the tour and also the expansion that we are already in the process of fully permitting. The next one. Yeah. Next one, please. So this is the Upper Beaver location. So you see very close to Kirkland Lake. And the intent as well, we're looking at a potential to understand if we could treat that, the ore produced at Upper Beaver on the Quebec side as we now complete the acquisition of the other half of Canadian Mark. So there are a few options at the table for us. We're evaluating all of them. There's no decision at this point for what, which one's the preferred one. So the highlight here, the base case is that would be an underground mining at the beaver. Okay, and so that will be uh, over 14 years of life. And with the current resources that we have that we've delineated so far, there is potential for a longer life of mine than 14 years. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we would be uh, looking at uh, a much bigger operation in Macasa, 5,000 tons a day, or um, and with the potential to be expanded. Um, Current base case has a mill at the, the upper beaver location, but as I mentioned before, we're looking at options on how to potentially treat this ore on the Quebec side. So, to the next one. So, with that, I conclude the, the quick presentation introduction of like Nick Weaver to the council here. If you have any questions, members have any questions to this delegation? Councilor Hiding? Could you uh, give your worship? Um, the beaver uh, project, can you give us an idea? Like we've been sort of sitting here for a number of years, some of us, uh, to determine uh, the latest exploration work when it will be completed and have a decision whether there will be an operating mine. Yeah, so right now we did a lot of exploration um, from, from a regional perspective. So we'll say now we need to get to a better position within the, the ore body to be able to drill it better. So that means an exploration shaft. So that exploration shaft, as I mentioned, could be as early as 2024 to start the work. So as, as early as next year. Now we are in a process of uh, let's say a capital location decision that is a bigger, a bigger conversation as a, a bigger company. So this is a process of how we're going to get to that timeline. If it's going to be 24, 25, depends on this process of capital location. But overall, it's a strong project. Okay, there's a, a bit of a lower grade deposit, but within the portfolio that we have right now, Specifically with these opportunities, if we can leverage the, the opportunity of the Canadian Malarta, could accelerate the project further. Thank you. Okay. Anything further? Councillor Owen? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, a couple of questions about the Upper Beaver. Um, first question is you're talking about sinking an exploration shaft. Would that or could that be converted to a production shaft, or would you be looking at sinking a whole, if you made a production decision, looking at yeah, so, a whole new shaft? Yeah, so the current design includes a, a new shaft if it's after the exploration shaft. So it will be just phased, right? Yeah. So we would have like, and also depends on the results of that exploration shaft. Yeah. So there's, like, there's going to be some project reviews after the exploration shaft is completed. And we have the chance to get a degree in the lower body. Okay. And do you still have um, permanent tailings on at, at the upper beaver? Or um, oh, I forget the other mine that was oh, McBean mine. Uh, yeah, so we have Holton Hallway tailings, but the, the facility at the upper beaver will be a new facility. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Councillor Shaba? Yeah. Hi, Your Worship. Uh, to you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'm just going to pick up on what uh, Councillor Owen said about production uh, down the road. Uh, I, I do hope that uh, 
maybe to come back again in the future, uh, getting closer to production so that uh, we can, uh, our staff can work with you or with your uh, firm, uh, at least in the areas of uh, uh, the manpower, people that will be needed because on our side, we have to be ready in terms of housing needs, uh, which is very critical for anybody coming to any community. So um, I'm hoping that uh, when that time comes close to production time, then we'll have a, a discussion, uh, a dialogue regarding uh, how to go about uh, accommodating potential uh, influx of people coming to our community. Thank you. Yeah, and that's part of the project, right? That's the project for both. Um, that would first be we are consulting our, with our First Nations communities to understand the impacts, to explain that. But for sure, as we mature in that journey, the communication will be made available and we'll be here to explain to the city, the community, what our plans are to ramp up uh, the overall number of workers and how we're planning to mobilize them. Any further council members? I just want to thank you for your time. It's always such a pleasure meeting with you and your team. Um, and we really look forward to forging stronger partnerships with you and your entire team in the future. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you guys for inviting us. And again, I reinforce the message myself and Chris, we are available. If there's any questions, we're more than happy to answer. Thank you so much. Have a good evening and congratulations on your your night tonight. You're celebrating. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait. We still have to read the motion. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley. Be a result of the delegation from representatives of the Nico Eagle Mines Limited, entitled General Update of Activities from the Nico Eagle Mines Limited, be received for information. All in favor? All opposed? I move carry unanimous. Just have to move. Oh, yes. And so moving on to item five, acceptance of minutes and recommendations. Moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Casey Owen. We resolve that Council approve the minutes of the following meeting. Minutes of the regular meeting of Council held February 7th, 2023. All in favor? All opposed? Item carried unanimous. Moved by Councillor Lodge Shaba, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley. Be resolved that Council receive the minutes of the following meeting. Minutes of the Kirkland Lake Police Services Board held August 10th, 2022. All in favor? All opposed? Item carried unanimous. Item number six, reports for, of municipal officers and communications. Request to cancel lease encroachment agreements 23 Premier Avenue West and 62nd Street, Jenna McNaughton, Planning Administrator. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to council, I received a request to cancel the lease agreement at 23 Premier West. And I'm also looking at canceling the lease agreement for 62nd Street. Um, so for the first one, 23 Premier, they've had this lease agreement in place since 1986. Um, when they did request to have the lease canceled, we did go out and do an inspection, make sure they're not using the laneway still. Um, so that's been confirmed. So they are just looking at having the lease canceled. In regards to the second request, uh, 62nd Street, um, we did sell the land to the leaseholder. So um, logically, we can't be uh, charging them for a lease agreement on property we don't own. So we're just looking at um, having these two leases canceled. There is a bit of a, re um, a reduction with uh, the revenue that we receive, but they are no longer using municipal property. Thank you. Council members, are there any questions or comments? None noted. Like the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Vlad Chava, seconded by Councillor Casey Owen to be resolved that report number 2023 BB008 entitled Request to Cancel Lease Agreement 23 Premier Avenue West and 62nd Street be received. That Council hereby cancel the lease slash encroachment agreements for 23 Premier Avenue West and 62nd Street and finding that a bylaw be brought forth for two readings on February 23rd, 2023 to this event. All in favor? All opposed, item carried unanimous. 
Item number seven is considerations of notice and motions. At this time, I'm going to vacate the chair as I have the notice of motions and acting mayor shadow to take my place. Thank you, sir. Item seven point one. That matters been withdrawn. Oh, yes. yeah. okay. Item seven point two, Mayor White. Okay, so this one um came in from and sorry if I do butcher the French pronunciation. Um, it came from the board of the directors of the Centre Santé Communitaire du Tumiskaming, um, and it's a request to have a letter sent regarding the lack of consistency in the phlebotomy services in the north end of Tennessee. I don't know if there's any questions, um, but the motion was, was pretty clear. I, was privileged. Um, I just realized <clears throat> that my uh, daughter-in-law uh, could be affected by this motion, so I am declaring a uh, Oh, uh, pecuniary interest at this time. Okay. Um, Seaworks is a uh, good law. Yes, through yes. you. Um, Councillor, did you want to fill out your form, read your description, and then we'll um, then I can proceed? Read. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, another question I have, since she's not legally married to my son, can I call her my daughter-in-law in this form? Is she your daughter-in-law? They're common-law. For you, Mr. Chair? Okay, you, you, um, that would have been a, uh, uh, okay. sorry, a question for integrity commissioner. Okay, I well, can. I can work around it. So are, are you... Still I'm still, I'm still oh, declaring. Okay. Oh, okay. I just didn't know if I could refer to her, but I'll just refer to her as my son's partner, and that gets around the question. Agenda um, number what agenda number seven point two. 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 Sure. I, Rick Owen, am declaring a dean of pecuniary interest um, on an item, agenda item from February 21st, 2023, at the open meeting, item number 7.2. So, a lot of phlebotomy. phlebotomy services is the title. It's deemed as it is my, uh, anyways, the nature of my interest is as, as follows. My son, Brian's partner, Mallory Surtees, is a phlebotomist that works in the north, in North Temiskaming. Yeah, I'm going to tell her again, another profession that's even a dispel. Yes, well, I have a few nicknames. <laughs> yes. Uh, through you, Your Worship, uh, I just uh, like to make a few comments on the, on this motion. Uh, give a little bit of background. Uh, I'm a member of the board uh, uh, for the family health team, and this matter has come up for discussion in the past. And I, I met with uh, the director of the family health team in December, and. Uh, just to get the lowdown on what uh, what is happening here, uh, the Ministry of Health does not provide funding for this service, for starters. Uh, presently, the Family Health Team provides uh, phlebotomy service uh, at the rate of ten thousand per year. Uh, well, Santé de Santé provides twelve hundred per annum. Or approximately five per day. Um, they did provide this service and then they opted out. 
Um, the family health team has a contract with the life labs uh, that due to their volume, the 10,000 uh, units, they pay for the staffing for the unit at the family health team. Uh, Santé uh, de Santé has the option of bringing their blood samples to the family health team to be included in the uh, family health team service. Uh, the hospital has been approached and they are proposing to provide their services, uh, which have been closed. Uh, the, recently, in the last year, approximately a couple hundred thousand dollars was put in to the hospital uh, for a new uh, lab. So they're more than capable of handling uh, uh, the volumes uh, and uh, reopening to the public. It's highly unlikely that the Minister of Health will intervene to pay for the service and would put a further financial strain on the health care system. Uh, this is a, a local problem from the community partner, which the community partners have to work together to ensure service is available. Uh, the director of the family health team would be uh, available to uh, speak to council on this issue. Um, I think that is the best avenue for them uh, to, to go. Um, I cannot support uh, a letter to the Ministry of Health through not have nothing to do with this program as it stands. Good. Thank you very much. Yep. Any, yes. So because the service is provided by a private enterprise at this point, so this is, I believe, at the root of the request is that phlebotomy services are not being funded by the Ministry of Health, and perhaps they should. Even though it's brought specifically by a specific board within the community, does not mean that the community at large is not being greatly and adversely affected by what is happening in this community. We know ourselves, we've seen it ourselves, the lineups mm -hmm. prior to eight o'clock in the morning at minus 45, 44 degrees with the wind chill, our elderly individuals are standing outside. It has been confirmed that phlebotomy services have not been provided for the last week or so, and it appears that they will not be provided for the next few weeks as well. So this is a larger issue than just the private sector not being able to meet the needs. It is a wider range, and that falls well within the mandate of the Ministry of Health, in my opinion. I no, I'm okay. a, uh, Make a brief worship. Uh, I agree. There it has been uh, um, a breakdown of uh, services being provided due to uh, staffing issues. So uh, I think it's vacation more than anything. Uh, but the ministry uh, does not provide this service at all. In the uh, in the Lizard, uh, the Life Labs has their own private uh, labs and uh, provide full service um, rather than doing that in Kirkland they they've used the family health team uh, I just I don't think we're working uh, with our community partners uh, as well as we should to get uh, get this problem solved um, and that that's my concern more than anything okay. Yes, absolutely. I think any uh, any letter that brings attention to the problem is never necessarily a bad thing. Uh, there's definitely a situation where if, if the hospital can do it, why are they waiting for us to, to ask? Like, you know, you used to be able to go get your blood work done at the hospital, just get it done. Like, we shouldn't have to do this. So this would probably bring attention to the problem and uh, all the situation. So I don't think it's a bad thing to... Yeah, I think what happened, uh, Casey, the hospital decided that it was going to be a cost savings not to provide uh, phlebotomy service. 
uh, it turns out it, it hasn't made any difference at all because they still have the same staff. Um, and uh, this change was made by the previous uh, C CAO or CEO. Um, however, the new CEO coming in uh, is prepared to uh, review this uh, for potentially to uh, provide additional services uh, uh, to the community. Any more questions? No, okay. Um, yes. Uh, moved by Mayor Stacey White, seconded by Councillor Dolan Dykins. Whereas the board of directors of the Santé Communitas Timiskaming have identified that the north end of the district of Timiskaming is inequitable in its access to phlebotomy services despite an existing and growing demand in the area. And whereas the current situation has a critical impact on area residents who face the unique challenges in Northern Ontario, such as shortages of healthcare professionals, having to travel considerable distances and endure wait times and extreme weather conditions, and bear the added financial burden associated with limited availability of diagnostic phlebotomy services district-wide, and whereas phlebotomy is an essential element in the identification of healthcare treatments, which is paramount to the well-being of our residents and our community. Therefore, be it resolved that Council for the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake hereby support the request for equitable access to phlebotomy services in the north end of the district of Thomasway, and finally, that a copy of this motion be forwarded to the CEO of the Kirkland District Family Health Team, Minister of Health, Ontario Health Chief Regional Officer for Northeast and Northwest, MPP Cochrane Tumiskame, MP Timmons James Bay, the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities, and all municipalities within the District of Tumiskame. All in favor of the motion? Against? Motion is carried. Item 7.3, Mayor White. Thank you, Anthony Mayor Shava. Uh, this is regards to Bill 42, Gender Affirming Health Care Advisory Committee Act. Uh, this act, the, um, sorry. yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> we forgot about you. Sorry. I couldn't hear a word. <laughs> so, what this um, act states is within 60 days of the act coming into force, the Minister of Health will establish a gender affirming health care advisory committee, which will create a report making recommendations for improving access to and coverage for gender affirming health care. After which the minister shall inform the assembly of the measures they recommend the government of Ontario to implement. So the request is for our community to add our name to lobbying the government as it's in second reading at this point. It has not received second reading. So we want to let them know that this is something that our communities uh, support and want equitable healthcare for all our citizens. Okay, any questions? Yes. Now, um, I guess I, I don't know enough about um, this, but medically necessary services, you mean people who are, uh, identify as trans or gender diverse, they don't have the same access to health care as others? Yes. So that is, um, there is no coverage of specific costs for them. So that is what the, the bill is to get a government committee together to investigate. That's basically what we're asking for. So they, like, if, if I get sick and I go to the hospital, a gender... Um, I don't know the terminologies. Um, gender diverse person wouldn't be able to go to the hospital. No, like, that's not what it's. No, about. that's not what it's saying. So this bill is to create a committee to investigate these issues. So that's all it's asking for is the support to for the bill to create a committee to look into. Sorry. Yeah. Um, to look into, yep. Okay. <laughs> okay, as I, I'll read it again. Okay, uh, basically stating within sixty days of the act becoming into force, the Minister of Health will establish a gender affirming health care advisory committee, which will create a report making recommendations for improving access to and coverage for gender affirming health care. 
So it's not a matter of the common cold, it's specific to these individuals. Are you, uh, you okay with that? Yeah, I guess I should have read the only two. Eddie, yes, that's the order. Yeah, thank you, Acting Mayor. Yeah, I, I've watched on the news and there has been um, some, uh, I've seen a number of times where there's been complaints about uh, bias or uh, um, they're not being respected uh, for how they identify. And I think this is, and I could be all wrong, but I believe this is to assure that when a transgender person um, goes through medical help, that they will be identified, they will be treated as they are, as they identify, and that um, it's an attempt, I believe, to take bias out of the system, um, where some doctors may say, well, it goes against my moral privilege, uh, my moral principles or or whatever and, and so I, I have uh, you know life was simpler when I was young there was boys and girls and, and that was it but today it's it's a very uh, uh, complex society we live in and, and they should get equal treatment as what I do when I do it. so I think it's a good thing Keith any more questions if none, uh, you can read the recommendation. I sure can. Can you read the motion? Moved by Mayor Stacey White, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens. Whereas in the current state, medically necessary services are inaccessible to the majority of trans and gender diverse people in Ontario. And whereas gender affirming health care is recognized as medically necessary by the World Professional Association for Transgender Health and many other recognized medical institutions and organizations in Canada and around the world. And whereas in November 2022, Bill 42 Gender Affirming Health Care Act was introduced in the Ontario Legislature as an essential first step to improving the health and health care of transgender, non binary, two spirit, and gender diverse people in Ontario. And whereas if passed, this bill will require the Ministry of Health to form an advisory committee to review the state of trans health care in Ontario and make recommendations to the Minister of Health for improving gender affirming care in Ontario. Therefore, be it resolved that Council for the Corporation of the Town of Personal Lake support the passing of Bill 42, Gender Affirming Health Care Act. And finally, that a copy of this resolution be sent to the Premier of Ontario, the Ontario Ministry of Health, the Ontario Ministry of Social Services, MPP Crawford Kamiskamay, MP Timmons James Bay, the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities, Kirkland and District Family Health Team, Ontario Health Chief Regional Officer for Northeast and Northwest, and all municipalities within the District of Timiskaming. All in favor? Yeah. Against? I'm um, abstaining. Uh, I just uh, oh, that's a good yeah. 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 yeah, I just don't want that. Yeah, so but, but the motion is carried. Okay, the motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. I'm <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Shaba. Item number eight, introduction, reading, and consideration of bylaws. Moved by Councillor Lahad Shaba, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. It resolved that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time, numbered passed, signed by the mayor and a clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 23008 being a bylaw authorizing the mayor municipal clerk to execute a contract extension agreement with RSM Building Consultants, Inc. for professional building and safety services. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. Moved by Councillor Patrick Kiley, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time numbered pass signed by the mayor and clerk and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 23009 being a bylaw to repeal bylaws that establish leases and encroachments of certain town lands. All in favor? All opposed? Item carried unanimous. Item number nine, questions from council to staff. There were none submitted. Item 10, notices of motion. None noted. Item number 11, updates from members of council. Councillor Owen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I attended uh, the DSAB meeting 
last week along with uh, I attended in person and Councillor Kiley attended uh, by Zoom. Uh, it was the budget meeting, and that's why I'm I'm, uh, I'm talking about it now, so the council will be aware and the Treasury Department will be aware. Um, two options were presented at that meeting for the budget. Um, if the first option is voted through, um, the increase that we will pay uh, to DSAB would be 3.54%. Um, it's, I think, around $38,000. It's a, it's a small increase, um, which I was quite happy with. Um, I was even happier with uh, uh, option B that was presented to us. And in option B, it's proposed that $102,000 be taken out of the uh, working reserves and put in to the budget, in which case that would reduce our increase to 2.35%. Um, now, I must admit, this is only my second DSAB meeting, and I've been learning uh, quite a bit. Um, in the first couple of meetings. Um, DSAB has a policy that they must have a minimum of one month's operating uh, dollars in their working reserve fund and a maximum of two months uh, funds in their working reserve. Um, currently, they have about uh, $5.4 million in that working reserve, uh, which I found shockingly high, but um, it does put them uh, on well above, uh, just over 50% above the one month minimum required by their policy. Um, the other thing that I, I found out at the budget meeting, they have uh, specific reserves for specific items. Um, for example, I believe it was around $85,000 for the replacement of, of um, ambulances. That's another reserve fund. They had a reserve fund, and this one I found quite interesting. Uh, they had a reserve fund for, to pay termination or severance pay to paramedics and the uh, financial, uh, their treasurer, in effect, that's another title, but um, explained that the province had given them, had given them a bunch of money a few years ago, specifically to pay severance to paramedics. Uh, they've now spent all that money. Um, so that, that reserve fund has been closed and it will not be reopened. Um, but in any case, I think this is a good case scenario. We're looking at a maximum of 2.5, and I think that's around 38,000, or a minimum of 2.35, unless unless something happens at the next DSAP meeting. Um, I thought we were going to vote on it at that meeting, but they do it this way so we can bring it back to our counselors and bring it back to our staff and inform them of what's being proposed. And then we go to the next meeting. So there could be changes yet, but so far I, I'm quite happy with the, uh, I recommended the uh, taking the 102,000. And uh, I mean, when I'm there, I'm representing Kirkland Lake, what's best for Kirkland Lake. And it certainly keeps them still around 50% above their minimum that they require by, by policy, by policy, not by best practices, but by policy. Okay. I don't know if uh, Councillor Kylie wants to add any more to that. Okay, thank you, Councillor Owen. Councillor Kylie. Uh, yeah, I agree with uh, Councillor uh, Owen. We uh, we thought we were going to have the vote uh, at that time. Uh, we did uh, express our opinion that we did like option two. Uh, that we would all love to have $5 million in reserve 
sitting there. Uh, but that'll come up at the next meeting for decision. Uh, I also attended uh, the uh, library uh, presentation uh, for the uh, children's uh, renewal part of the building uh, with Councillor uh, or Mayor uh, White. Uh, I was quite impressed with the uh, fundraising to date. Uh, it looks like a great pro project and uh, uh, certainly added that value to the uh, uh, local children. Uh, I'll also I'd like to thank uh, the Lions Club for putting on the family day. Uh, I don't know exactly how many people were there, but it was a packed house. Uh, it was a, a great event and uh, uh, congratulations to the Lions Club for their, uh, their small group, but mighty. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Shaba? Yeah, um, just before my uh, report, I'd just like to uh, maybe suggest that in future we get a copy of uh, the minutes from this app as part of our package. That will really help us immensely. I'm just trying to uh, ask you uh, questions. Do we get them? Uh, or is there something that will be done? I'm just, sure, uh, just recommending that. To all of council, um, I did make the request to all of the uh, regional um, non local boards. Or local ports, local and regional ports. Um, I have been receiving some; they have been coming in, but uh, I I have been only uh, uh, putting them on the agenda when they are been actually approved by the board. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, just going to my uh, brief report, I attended my first uh, meeting of the uh, the KL Police uh, Services Board, uh, and uh, we. We have a new board, uh, and as you know, there have been talk about uh, reorganization and have a regional board, and that has not taken place as of yet. So my understanding is that the composition of the uh, board uh, will stay put for now until further notice. So um, Mr. Uh, Ted Asset, he was appointed, uh, elected as the chair, and I uh, was uh, volunteered by him as the vice chair. <laughs> um, we did have uh, uh, the uh, returning members, I believe, uh, Megan and uh, Emil uh, in attendance, uh, in addition to the staff sergeant, uh, Ryan Hilden. So I'm not really sure how much uh, I have to say about the transition or the changes. I'm not this public knowledge. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Um, he will be leaving. Oh, uh, are you talking about the police services board or the OBP? change? The change of staff. staff yeah, staff. I know we let uh, through the matter, Mayor. We let the OBP uh, identify. Okay. All right. So um, we did get a lot of uh, uh, data from uh, the staff sergeant who mm -hmm. was in attendance about uh, their activities. So. Uh, I don't uh, have a copy of that with me. Actually, when I was looking at this agenda, I, I thought you had the entire uh, minutes attached, but it was the minutes from previous meeting. So my apologies for that. I thought, oh, that's the minutes right there for anyone to see. But it was not our minutes. But I don't know, it was a good meeting. I never plan to meet again. I have uh, uh, many meetings in between to formalize some of the things that uh, we want uh, uh, to do. Uh, so that's all I can. So I can share with you for now, and uh, I'll keep you posted on future developments. Thank you, sir. Councillor Early? Yeah, Madam Mayor, uh, to you, to uh, Councillor Shaba. I do have the agenda with me from, uh, and the budget information with me from uh, the DSAB meeting. So if Madam Clerk wants to fill a copy of it, uh, you can have a copy. But that's only if you're nice to man. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't asking for the agenda. Well, well no, it's got minutes. the. Yeah. Well, I've got the package from that meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, through Madam Mayor to all the council. So the minutes uh, the council were, would be receiving. Yeah. Um, you're going to receive a report from the council as a whole, yeah, yeah. and then those minutes would be passed at the following meeting. Okay. Um, so those meetings are forthcoming uh, as the groups are starting to get together and. Um, for the first time, many of them, uh, you'll start seeing minutes trickling in 
on your agendas. You'll be receiving them for information. You won't be approving them naturally. So you'll be seeing them uh, as they become available. Yeah. Anything further from council members? Okay, for my part, uh, since the last meeting, I did have the opportunity, as Councillor Kylie said, to speak at the Children's Department Refresh Project Reveal on Wednesday, February 8th. It was a very well attended event with um, in honored guests and very generous donors Marianne Mavernak, Peter Van Shea, and Andre Leachy from Agnigo Eagle. A class from Central School were in attendance, along with the staff and board members of Tech Centennial Library, a representative of the Friends of Library Group, representatives from Toronto Dominion Bay, and valued members of the public. It is important to note, like Councillor Kylie stated, the project will be approximately $600,000 value. And as of the day of launch, they had already had financial commitments of just over $485,000 of that. So it leaves a meager $116 to raise over the next year as the majority of renovations will take place uh, starting 2024, hopefully. Uh, Crook and Lake was featured on CBC Radio as part of their ongoing Monday Morning Mayor series on the 13th, and it was a real pleasure actually getting to share, you know, our exciting news and events that took place and are going to take place, uh, including winter activities provided by Cabaret Charitable Foundation, the Rotary Club, Skating Club, the Lions Club, um, as well as mentioning the anticipated groundbreaking of chart technologies. I spoke with a few individuals regarding traffic concerns and immigration and directed them back to staff and with the municipal clerk's assistant was able to direct one to John Van Toff's office and the Law Society of Upper Canada. I attended the Tech Centennial Library Board meeting in which the CEO's work plan for 2023 was presented, including plans for the development of a children's section up in the adult department as construction begins and creating an outdoor space for library patient, uh, patrons. I invited both John Vanathoff and Charlie Angus to delegate to our council dependent on their availability, of course. And finally, I reached out to all 23 mayors and reeves within our district to form personal connections, share our successes, as well as our opportunities and challenges. 10 members have already responded over the weekend resulting in two phone conversations with Mayors Gibson of Cobalt and McLean of McGarry. So thank you for indulging me in that. Item number, oh, no, item number 11.1. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Bonachago, seconded by Councillor um, Rick Owen. Uh, the result of the verbal updates from members of Council do receive. All in favor? All opposed? Item carried unanimous. Item number 12, additional information. There is none this evening. And so we're going to take a 10 minute recess in between closed sessions. Thank you. We're reconvening after the 10 minute break. Item number 13, closed sessions. Moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens, be it resolved that Council adjourn in camera pursuant to Section 2392 of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended to discuss pers personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, and a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipal uh, municipality or local board, and um, also Section um, under 239 uh, uh, employment negotiations. Um, or the following items. Item 13.1, request to purchase a closed road allowance adjustment to Woman Foss Road. Item 13.2, collective bargaining, United Steelworkers Local 2020. Items 13.3, verbal reports, uh, supplemental committee of council public appointment. All in favor? All opposed? None no. Uh, no, no. Recommendation to reconvene. Moved by Councillor Rick Owens, seconded by Councillor Lad Shaba. Be it resolved that Council reconvene in open session at 6 15 p.m. All in favor? 
No, all opposed. Item carried unanimous. Item number 14.1, request to purchase closed road allowances adjacent to one boss road. Moved by Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Lod Chaba. In result that report number 2023 DEV 10 entitled request to purchase closed road allowances adjacent to one boss road be received. And then council approved the sale of land described as parts 22. 54R6325 to Renee ML in the sum of $2,082.81. And the council authorized the mayor and municipal clerk to execute the offer to purchase and all appropriate sale documents as may be required. And finally, that a final offer to sale of the property be brought forward for three readings on March 7th, 2023. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. Item number 14.2, collective bargaining, United Steelworkers, Local 2020. Moved by Councillor Patrick Kiley, seconded by Councillor Liz Owen, be resolved that report number 2023 CAO002 entitled, entitled Collective Bargaining Unit United Steel Fortress Local 120 mm -hmm. in Union be received, and that Council approve the memorandum of settlement between the Corporation of the Town Kirkland Lake and United Steel Workers Local 2020 as presented, and that Council authorize the Mayor Municipal Clerk to sign a collective agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake and the United Steel Workers Local 2020 volunteer firefighters covering the period of February 3rd, 2023, February 3rd, 2026, and finally that an execution by law be brought forward for three readings on March 7th, 2023. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. Item 14.3, Supplemental Committees of Council Public Appointments. Moved by Councillor Lad Shaba, seconded by Councillor Dolly Dykins, be it resolved that the following individuals be appointed, the following individual be appointed to the Kirkland Lake Economic Development Committee for the year 2023 in this term of council, Natasha Dombrowski. And finally, that the following individual be appointed to the Kirkland Lake Museum Advisory Committee for the 2022-2026 term of council, Melinda, Melinda Wall. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimous. Item number 15, confirmation bylaw. Moved by Councillor Dolly Dykin, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time. Number passed, signed by the mayor and clerk, and the sealed corporation be affixed there too. Bylaw number 23010, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council held at its meeting, at its meeting held on February 21st, 2023. Sorry. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. And adjournment. Moved by Councillor Dolly Dyke and seconded by Councillor Lad Shaba. Be it resolved that this regular meeting of council do now adjourn at 6 18 p.m. All in favor? Opposed? Adam Carey.